Oh, thank God. I didn't think anyone would come for me. I've been locked up in this damn gulag for months. What? You mean you're not here to rescue me? You've been thrown in too? Ah, oh, hell. Well, since we have time to kill, I guess we could talk some X-Files. Today we're continuing where we left off with Tunguska with Terma, episode 9 of season 4. Terma debuted December 1st, 1996, and has Mulder attempting to escape his Russian prison, while Scully does all she can to clear his name. The episode begins at a convalescent home in Boca Raton, Florida, and I really hope the ghosts here aren't as rapey. A woman sneaks her aunt out of the home to a van with a Jack Kevorkian type fellow, and if you don't know who that is, look him up. This lady has made the decision that she doesn't quite want to deal with her suffering anymore, and I can't exactly blame her. An old folks home has to be one of the most depressing places on earth. While well, they hook her up and get the whole process started, but something goes awry. Something's wrong here. The old lady was definitely ready to go, however the black oil living inside her wasn't quite as willing. E per si moavi. That's a weird way of saying that truth is out there. Meanwhile in Russia, a guy named Vasily Peskov, and I'm sure I just butchered his name, receives communication that the Cold War isn't quite over yet. It's actually kind of lukewarm. Anyways, Mulder is still having a great time being locked up, and let's not forget he's now best friends with the black oil. What did they do to me? You have been exposed to the black cancer. Cancer my ass. I've never known cancer that can possess someone. Mulder's being used as part of an experiment, testing various vaccines against the black oil. And his neighbor here? He was a geologist who helped find the black oil in the first place. So I guess we all have him to blame. Mulder's new friend either hands him a handmade shank or a tool to dig out Shawshank style. He must be a glutton for punishment because he'd rather stay behind and be tested on than leave. Meanwhile, Scully and another doctor are trying to figure out what happened to Dr. Sachs. And I don't know what this is on my screen, but I want it off right now. Man, Vasily is fast, because now he's in Richmond, Virginia all of a sudden. He grabs a bus headed to Charlottesville, but couldn't he just have flown there from Russia? I mean, it does have a lovely airport. <gasps> oh, pardon me. Who are you? As a boy, my father had a farm, but not horses like these. Oh, well, uh, that makes it alright to sneak on someone's property and start messing with their horses, I guess. Vasily has come to see this woman, a Dr. Carney Sarah, for something, though we don't find out what because he decides to choke her out instead. Unless choking her was the reason. Anyway, Scully gets back to her apartment, but she must have done something naughty because Skinner's there to chew her out about the dead diplomat and the pouch basically awkwardly recapping the previous episode. To find out who was to receive it. Who was it? Dr. Bonita Carnsayer. Wait, the horse lady was supposed to get the black oil infected rock? She was apparently a big wig in virology, and Skinner came to tell Scully that she was found dead. A horse stepped on her throat in a riding accident in Virginia. Did the old man make a horse step on her after he choked her, or is he just that damn strong? While they figure that mess out, Mulder gets to do some light yard work for those silly Russians. But what is Krychek doing with Dr. Evil? Mulder takes this opportunity to charge Krychek and give him a few well-deserved shots, but why not just use the shank? Men on horses take off after Mulder, but only once he's driven off with the truck. They had plenty of time to stop him, but I guess a chase would be more exciting. Was Mulder even wearing a seatbelt? This probably should have killed him, but he's got that main character plot armor. You know, the guys chasing him barely even tried. If they kept going, they probably could have caught him. Uh-oh, what are these two up to now? The murdered doc worked for the well-manicured man, and because she was murdered, he needs CSM to clean things up. It's okay to mock CSM and his love of guns, but oh, when shit hits the fan, he's the first one you call up. Were you sleeping with her? Oh, gross. Again, how did Mulder survive this? Meanwhile, Krychek is off running around in the woods when a band of one-armed bandits confront him. They stupidly believe his lies that he escaped the camp, when he sure was buddy-buddy with Chrome Dome. Anyways, we're back at the beginning of Tunguska as Scully gets grilled over just where the hell Mulder is. Now, either you tell us what you know about Agent Mulder's whereabouts, or you'll be held in contempt of Congress.
Back with Mulder, whose super secret hiding spot is quickly found out, and apparently the truck he destroyed belonged to this guy. His wife and himself have been saved from the testing because they offer to do pickups for the prison, but without a truck, they're basically sitting ducks. So, way to go, Mulder. The woman tells Mulder that there are other ways of getting around the testing. It just requires a light uh, medical procedure. Just, you know, amputation of your arm. <laughs> Krychek isn't even given the option. The people that took him in just wake him up and start sawing his arm off. Even in jail, Scully is still such a nerd that she still needs to study. Skinner comes in to have a little chat, and Scully believes this entire thing is a smokescreen. With everything that has gone on, the committee's only concern is where Mulder is. Not the murdered doctor, or the doctor paralyzed with some black oil. No, where is Mulder? Vasily enters the room with Dr. Sachs without any kind of protection, but I guess he doesn't need it when he has a syringe and a bottle full of Lipton iced tea. Vasily unhooks the doc's oxygen and steals the rock, and CSM and the well-manicured man seem pretty pissed that he's in town. CSM may already have someone that can find him, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. The following day at the committee hearing, it's the same old shit. Where's Mulder? Where's Mulder? Scully tries to speak, but they will not let her get a goddamn word in. No matter what she says, they just keep talking over her. Oh, if only some kind of saving grace were to suddenly walk in through those doors. Answer the question, Miss Scully. What is the question? The look on her face like, thank God. Skinner then also comes in to let her know what happened to Dr. Sachs, and the entire hearing has to be put to recess because we've got multiple dead doctors, a spooky rock, a pouch, a dead diplomat, and it's only Tuesday. From Scully's reading, she discovered Dr. Carne Asada is responsible for the convalescent homes in Boca Raton. The same convalescent homes where its elderly folks seem to be dealing with a case of the black oil. I'm sure there's no connection though. Or maybe there is because Vasily just showed up. Mulder and Scully arrive in record time and discover all the old folks are dead and leaking that nasty black oil. It's a good thing they don't check all the patients because it gave Vasily the perfect hiding spot. Mulder and Scully then speak to one of the men that took Krychek because he may know a thing or two about what Krychek could be up to. Did he ever mention black cancer? Oh yeah. The guy claims this black oil or cancer is some kind of bioweapon that was developed and that Krychek was building a couple devices with the second one being located in Terma, North Dakota. There's a lot going on here with deception across the board, but I guess Vasily is trying to bring the rock to Canada to hide it in the ground and Krychek intends on blowing it up? I'm not gonna lie, but this is where I start to get lost. They find the truck that was used to transport the rock and while Mulder investigates the area, he sends Scully off to the refinery where the alleged bomb is stored. I was not going to mention this, but it was too stupid for me not to. When I was re-watching this episode, for some reason, I thought Scully was flying the helicopter, and I have no idea why. I even went into a deep dive searching online to see if Scully having piloting credentials had ever been mentioned. I was even going to make a joke about Scully turning into a man with a mustache. And then I realized Mulder was coming out of a door behind the pilot. He wasn't coming out of a door next to the pilot. I seriously had this all written and ready to go, and then I'm like, hold on, let me check that out again. So I went back and realized I would have made a big mistake and would have looked like a giant doofus. I mean, it's not the first time I would have made a stupid error like that, and I can assure you it will not be the last. Anyways, Vasily is there waiting for Scully, and Mulder finds the rock. <laughs> Well, he would have had it if it didn't start spraying oil everywhere, and if the truck didn't explode. And Scully gets really lucky too, because I guess killing her wasn't a part of Vasily's plan. After all the excitement, it's back to the boring hearing again. At least they can't keep asking where Mulder is this time. Scully offers up an explanation for everything that's gone on the past few days, but without the rock, and the mere mention that this virus, or whatever it is, was of extraterrestrial origin, extraterrestrial. the committee just has a big laugh. What are you talking about? Aliens? <laughs> but this just sets Mulder off, who goes into one of his great speeches, where he makes everyone look like a clueless clown. If you cannot get past this, 
then I suggest that this whole committee be held in contempt for ignoring evidence that cannot be refuted. Back in Russia, Vasily is met by a familiar face. Oh, that crazy cry check. He was in cahoots with Vasily from the very beginning, and here I thought he was beginning to turn a new leaf. Also, was his prosthetic hand molded specifically so he could have tea, or does he have multiple different hands for various tasks? And of course, Senator Sorensen has to be involved with the cigarette smoking man. Terma is a good conclusion to the two-parter, though I think I like Tunguska a little better. The ending to that episode was so tense, and you had no idea where it was going next. And then with this, Mulder very easily escapes from the Russian prison. And he seems perfectly fine, despite being part of some medical experimentation which involved the black oil. Also, does anyone know why Mulder's arm was saved when Crychex was removed? Maybe I missed something? He does briefly mention to Scully about hugging her with both arms, but I don't remember seeing anything to explain why the guy didn't cut his arm off, even though it was heavily implied that it was about to happen. I understand why they didn't do it because having one of your leads missing an arm all of a sudden would be difficult to work around for the rest of the series. I do enjoy seeing Crychek become a bigger part of this puzzle, and he seems to be out for himself more than anything else. Like he goes out of his way to antagonize not just Mulder, but also CSM and his cronies. Terma was directed by Rob Bowman, and I never realized before that they would have different directors for the two parters. Not that it's something that I ever really looked into, but you would think they would use the same director for both parts to help keep the vibe consistent. It doesn't really matter because both Kim Manners and Rob Bowman know what they're doing, so I doubt Chris had any real concerns here. The truth is, out there tagline was changed to the Italian, I per si muove, which roughly translates to, and yet it moves, or still it moves. This phrase is attributed to astronomer, mathematician, and philosopher Galileo Galilei back in 1633 when he was forced to recant his stance that the Earth and the planets in our solar system revolved around the Sun, a phrase he used when fighting back against the Inquisition, roughly meaning that no matter what someone tries to make you say or believe, it will never change what you know to be the truth. A large portion of the Russian prison was shot in Stanley Park near downtown Vancouver. They trucked in mud and large boulders to make it feel like Russia as much as they possibly could. They did their best to hide things with their camera shots that would give away that they were in Canada and removed anything from the filming area that would take the viewer out of the scene. It didn't have to be perfect, but just convincing enough that the audience would buy that they were actually in Russia. Rob Bowman said of the shoot, The prison was one of the episode's big sets making a prison look like it was in Russia when it was basically a ranger station in the middle of Stanley Park, just a couple of trees away from downtown Vancouver. We brought in I think 50 or 60 truckloads of dirt. You just create the atmosphere of being far away and you put a title under there that says Tunguska Russia. You try to make sure you don't give the viewer more reasons to disbelieve it than you believe it. You got the Russians, you got the horses, you got the prison, you got all that stuff. What's in the shot that could spoil it? Remove those things. The congressional hearings were held on a set built at North Shore Studios Stage 1. During this scene, Jillian had what she described as a mystical experience while standing up against the committee. She said, I don't know exactly what it was. I just remember working on that scene and feeling some aspects of Scully that I hadn't felt before or after. I don't know if they actually came across, but it was just, well, different. I remember walking away feeling very odd. The finale of the episode with the explosion at the refinery was filmed at a thermal energy plant near Port Moody, BC. The original plan was to blow up the entire refinery, but the mere cost of it all, and adding in the rains that were hampering filming, they decided instead to do the scene like the oil fires in Kuwait. Special effects supervisor David Gauthier and his crew created a fake wellhead which sprayed 35,000 gallons of oil-colored water into the air. They also attached a pump that would spray another 2,000 gallons of kerosene and gasoline into the air, and when given the go-ahead, they pressed a button creating the explosion seen in the episode. David Gauthier said, We had a remote control valve, so we could switch from one nozzle to another. So we essentially switched from liquid oil to burning oil, blew up the van directly in front of the oil well, and away we went. For the role of Vasily Peskov, they hired on Canadian actor Jan Rubisch. Jan was born June 6, 1920 in Czechoslovakia and emigrated to Canada in 1948. I've always recognized this guy, but never knew from what or why. He was just one of those faces that you know he's probably been in a million things. But upon further research, I discovered what I know him from. D2 The Mighty Ducks. 
I watched this movie a lot as a kid for whatever reason. I mean, I don't even like hockey, which I know is blasphemous for a Canadian to say, but deal with it. It's just a small role in the movie that I don't remember having a lot of screen time, but I knew I recognized him from something. That same year, he was also in The Birds 2, the terrible sequel to the Alfred Hitchcock classic. So this means Jan was in two movies the same year that were both sequels and both about birds. Hmm, interesting. Jan is unfortunately no longer with us, having passed away June 29th, 2009 at 89 years old. Terma is a good conclusion for our two-parter, if not a little weaker than Tunguska. It sits at 8.1 on IMDb, and I will probably go with an 8. Next up is a really good episode, as Mulder confronts a serial killer who claims Samantha was one of his victims, in the episode, Paper Hearts. As you can see, I managed to escape the gulag, and it was quite the adventure. Car chases, explosions, women, it's a shame you missed it. But anyways, what did you think of Terma? Let me know down in the comments. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and stay spooky. Sunday. Mulder and Scully uncover our nation's most terrifying conspiracy. The U.S. government knew about the black cancer. They lied. But exposing the truth. These people are test subjects. I think they've been poisoned. Could cost them their lives. A brand new X-Files, Sunday at 9, 8 central.